Start. Ah, Monster Hunter World. A game renowned for its weapon designs and the gameplay that revolves around them. I absolutely adore the Monster Hunter series, not only because I grew up on it, no, 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 but also because it's one of the few game series that has managed to make every single weapon in its arsenal viable. Whether you're swinging around a sword twice your size, or are simply sword and boarding it up, all the weapons in these games feel pretty balanced. But what about the consumables? Won't anyone think of the consumables? Like many gamers, I have an unhealthy fear of using anything with a limit. What if I need it later? What if I get poisoned and I need an antidote? Um, it's in here... somewhere... So in an effort to cure myself of that mentality, we're gonna play as your average Joe in the Monster Hunter universe. We aren't some superhuman hunter who's able to swing a massive chunk of iron like it's nothing. No, all we've got is our wits, our wallets, and our utility belt full of supplies and gadgets. Insert obligatory I'm Batman here. Now, I'm no fool. This game gets intense after a few missions, and before you know it, you're fighting an actual T-Rex. Something tells me that the consumables you're gonna get aren't gonna be much of a match for that. So how about we fight that thing instead? Yeah, that seems more reasonable. Can you defeat a great Jagras without using a weapon? Let's go over the rules. First, we have to start with a fresh character. No using a character that already has everything unlocked and all the endgame armors that boost all your stats. Also, as an added caveat, if you have the Monster Hunter Iceborne DLC, no using the fancy armor it gives you to try to boost your way through the main story. We're going straight vanilla with this one. Second, we can't use any of the 14 weapon types that the game offers you. If it's strapped to your back and can be upgraded at the workshop, it's off limits. And third, rules 1 and 2 apply to every and any situation, not just the Great Jagger's hunt itself. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Alright, let's do this. I make my character, dress up a cat, and start the tutorial. Colorful cast and crew aside, there's not much to see here. Bad things happen, I almost die, and I climb up Godzilla's back here until I can haphazardly throw myself off its face. Actually, looking back at that cutscene, we, uh, really didn't think any of that through, did we? I mean, Jesus, the handler doesn't even have any tools at all. What was she gonna do, flap her arms? Oh, I guess that really was the plan. We survive, somehow, and wake up in the new world. Still not a whole lot to see here. I sprint my way through the intro area, leave the handler to get eaten by lizards, and then continue sprinting towards our base of operations. Oh, hey, look who it is. You're, uh, you're a bit bigger in person than I was told. Uh, y you know what, Handler? Y you've got this. I I'll go get back up. I heroically run away until I reach Astera. Oh, good, the Handler made it here too. Just as planned. We walk around town, pick up my cat, and after a brief meeting that I was definitely paying attention during, we are given our first quest. Go kill seven baby Jagras. And here's where I start to realize what kind of predicament I've gotten myself into. The problem we face is simple. We have no method of steady DPS. I can't use weapons, so that one avenue of DPS is gone. And my cat, though useful for picking up extra goodies while I run around, can't come along either. Because there's always that off chance that he'll take the initiative and attack the monster himself. No, if I'm going to defeat anything, I'm going to need to pull some supplies together. I accept the quest and head on back to the ancient forest, but instead of going after our prey, I decide to go literally everywhere else. Seriously, I think I explored most of the entire map. But this wasn't just for the exercise and sightseeing. The real prize I'm after is all the flora and fauna you can find around the map. And there's a lot of it. With my pockets full, I tell the handler that I'm all done here and I want to go home! We may not have completed the mission, but so long as you say end quest and not abandon quest, you'll get to keep any and all loot that you found during your time in the woods. I craft a few objects, namely gunpowder and traps, sell the rest of my pocket lint, buy a few barrels to shove said gunpowder into, and head back out. This is going to be our gameplay loop for quite a while. Unfortunately, we haven't unlocked the ability to go on expeditions, so our only access to the forest is through the main quest which means that we have to listen to the NPCs drag on about inventory boxes and the like each and every time. Eventually, my stock of small barrel bombs reaches its limit, and with pockets full of explosives and undeserved confidence, we set out into the forest with the intention of actually doing our job for once. I head on over to the hunting grounds, find myself several Jagras, line up as many as I can in a small group, and... Wait, that's it? I barely even stunned them. So yeah, let's talk about how bombs work. First off, you've got several types, but we only have access to four different kinds at this point, which are barrel bombs, large barrel bombs, bounce bombs, and the mega bounce bombs. Each bomb does a set amount of raw damage, which means that no matter what monster I'm fighting, the damage will always be the same regardless of that monster's defense. Regular barrel bombs do 20 damage. A baby Jagras has 60 health. My math isn't that good, but that sounds like we're going to need three barrel bombs per Jagras. 
And as per usual, video games have to go and be semi-realistic, and put limitations on the number of firebombs I can have at any given point. I can only hold 10 barrel bombs at any given time, significantly less than the 21 I would need to finish the quest. However, I have a few workarounds up my sleeves. First, I attempt to push the jaggers together in order to maximize the bang for my buck. This, uh, well, it kinda works. But this is only a few jaggers, not all seven that I need, so I can't hope to gather all my kills in one space. But that's where sleeve number two comes into play. If I carry ten empty barrels on my person, then collect the materials to make the gunpowder, and then fill said barrels with said gunpowder, we can have another ten bombs. Unfortunately, that's still a little short of being able to blast each jaggers to death by itself, so I am gonna have to do some mosh pitting, but I should have enough firepower to force my way through this quest. I carve up my first few kills, then give chase. Whoo, fuck, there's a lot more of you than I thought. Thankfully, this den of theirs is pretty small, so it actually becomes a bit easier to catch multiple Jagras in each blast. It's a bit closer than I'd like, but eventually we get that sweet, sweet victory screen. While at base, I restock on supplies, then return to the handler to see what we're up against next. Kestodon? Those aren't even carnivores, how hard can that be? Oh. Oh no. So yeah, remember what I said about the game ramping up pretty quick? Normally this wouldn't be an issue. Slightly more defense, but less offense, an interesting changeup for everyone playing the game like a normal human being! For us though, this presents the problem of having enough DPS to actually finish the quest. Much like the quest before it, my quarry are in two separate areas, meaning I can't just group them all together in hopes of blasting them all at once. I've got two females and one male over here, and the remaining targets are over here having a beach episode. Obviously, base level barrel bombs aren't going to cut it this time around. So after gathering another few pocketfuls of supplies, I head back to HQ to see what other gadgets we might be able to throw together. Boomerangs? There are boomerangs in this game? I've played this game for like 300 hours, I've never used one of these, are they any good? No. No they are not. After wasting 5 boomerangs on these three, and only knocking out one Kestodon as a result, I realize that the boomerangs aren't supposed to be used as damage dealers. They're actually meant to cut tails for hunters that are using blunt weapons, or to activate large barrel bombs for those who don't remember that they can just throw rocks. Thankfully though, the boomerangs whittled them down just enough so that it only took a few barrel bombs to finish the job. D uh, five minutes? What the hell? What, what do I- Oh right, I had to go walk the dogs after I started the mission. Well, uh, okay, that's a little extra pressure I definitely didn't need. Uh, here, hold this for me. Whoa, that's way better. Why wasn't I doing that before? Oh, right. Expensive. It's a close call, and it takes some not-so-graceful crafting on the fly to get it done, but eventually I kill all the Kestodons, sprint up the beach, and finish the quest. God, I don't even want to know how close that timer was to- Oh, hey, you're back! Oh, and you're hungry again. Uh, well, um, I think the handlers are on here somewhere, I'm sure we can get her to- I quickly sprint back to HQ, and find out that we can finally hunt the Great Jagras. Thank God, I was worried we were gonna get outmatched due to the way the monster's health bars have been going... Uh, up. Let's, uh, let's do some math. In order to reach damage outputs even remotely close to that, I'm gonna need to use everything in my arsenal. And then some. I fully stock up on boomerangs, barrel bombs, and large barrel bombs, and make sure that I have the materials to fully restock each one once I get out on the field. I also craft a few poison smoke bombs, and as a last resort, I put together some trank bombs and a shock trap. And here's why. Great Jagras, on low rank, has approximately 1,408 HP. I've heard conflicting reports, but Karanico has never led me wrong in all my years of playing Monster Hunter, so let's go with it. With the knowledge that bombs ignore all monsters' natural defenses, we can enter the fight with 10 barrel bombs, 2 large barrel bombs, 5 bouncing bombs, and 5 mega bouncing bombs. Assuming I get every single bomb to go off correctly, we're looking at 610 damage. Then, mid-fight, I can craft another 10 mega bouncing bombs and another 5 large barrel bombs for a grand total of 700 more damage, or 1,310 damage total. Oof. Just short. However, with the addition of the boomerangs dealing about 20-ish damage on average before they inevitably break, and poison smoke bombs dealing a bit of damage on the side, maybe. Just maybe. But when push comes to shove, I guess there's only one way to find out. Alright big guy, take your lumps. Alright, let's start with the poison gas. Here, have some medicine. Okay, that's not as bad as I thought that was gonna be. Guess we better give you some more. Ah, oh, okay, you're getting more resistant to it. Well, at least we got two goes off of it. Now for the little damage. Man, this thing sucks. Okay, let's get out the big guns. Oh, oh, oh yeah, more of that, please. Mm -mm. Now that's some extra spice right there. I, uh, I'm not quite sure how you missed that one. Here, let me help you out. Wait, how am I out of bombs? How am I out of bombs? 
Oh, right, the blue ones. I forgot to craft the blue ones. Well, guess we gotta go to plan B. For those of you unfamiliar with Monster Hunter, you can defeat a monster in two ways. Killing it, or catching it alive. Personally, I love capturing monsters. Not only does it take a little more skill to realize when it's go time, but also because capturing a monster nets you rarer loot at the end. And generally speaking, faster quest times. But how does one capture? Why, simple math, of course! If I can do enough damage to our chunky boy here, and get him down to about 30% HP, he should start to limp, or give some other example of being injured to the point of capture. Once we see that, it's time to go on the offensive. Now we just gotta pray that my math was good, and that I had enough bang bangs to get him to that point. <sighs> Come on, Boomerang, can you please just stop being a disappointment to me for like five minutes? You're all I've got left, and I'll be damned if I need to start over. <gasps> oh crap, there it is! That's the tell! Alright, just gotta find a way to get him to trip over this shock trap I've got prepared here. You can bet that he's running back to the Jaguar Slayer, so if we can surprise him there, we've got him. Say cheese! Alright, now just hold still for a minute. There we are. And breathe deep. And there you go. Can you defeat the Great Jaggers without an actual weapon? You sure can. This was a lot of fun. I rarely use the items in Monster Hunter. I've gotten so accustomed to brute forcing my way through fights with my weapon alone that they just kind of fall to the wayside more often than not. But if you needed any proof that consumables have their place in the game, this at the very least should have given you some pause. Hell, imagine how good they are when you use a weapon alongside them. Or when you have skills that boost how good they are. Is there a skill that boosts firebombs? Oh. Oh my yes. Hey, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video was a bit shorter than my usual 20 minute rants, and hopefully you enjoyed it just as much, if not more. Don't forget to press all the buttons if you haven't done so already, and if you have to ask why, congratulations, you've just outed yourself as a bot. A real human would never have to ask why they have to push random buttons. A quick shout out to all my patrons for making these videos possible. I appreciate each and every one of you, and it means the world to me that you've decided to support the channel. If you ever notice the quality of the videos going up, it's because of these fine folks here. Outside of all of that, that's about all I've got this time around. Stay safe out there, don't forget to tip your handlers, and I'll see you all again soon.